Okay, here's a new and interesting look at uh, the field of genetics. And it shows you humanity's forgotten return to Africa is revealed through DNA. People have wondered how you get so many different odd African populations that are slightly different from each other. For a long time, we'd always thought that it was maybe just, uh, you know, being separated over time. Indeed, that's what we felt like made Mongoloids and Asians and things like that somewhat. But that's not necessarily true. We found that out a long time ago. Looking into this, you can see these Khoisan people here and how they're a little more yellowish skinned. A little more high yellow kind of looking, if you will, compared to maybe, say, the darker ones that are back here that are even admixed. But yet you can see how much darker they are. And these people spend a lot of time out in the sun, so they, they would get about as dark as possible. And these don't get that much darker. His forearms aren't much darker than the rest of his body in any way. I'm not sure if he took off his pants if it would be that much lighter if she took off her garments if she would be that much lighter they're all very much lighter and very much uh, about as primitive as they were when they were found and uh, as thousands of years ago except for they have more modern sandals you can see now and some of them though these are all barefoot and uh well she's got modern sandals on i guess that's where i noted it at she's got the velcro <laughs> fold over kind of sandals and stuff but uh so let's look at this. Call it humanity's unexpected U-turn. One of the biggest events in history of our species is the exodus out of Africa, or the out of Africa theory, some 65 to 70,000 years ago. The start of Homo sapiens' long march across the world. Now, a study of Southern African genes show that unexpectedly another migration took Western Eurasian DNA back to the very southern tip of the continent in the Cape some 3,000 years ago. According to conventional thinking, the Khoisan tribes of southern Africa, who we just showed, have lived in near isolation from the rest of humanity for thousands of years. In fact, the study shows that some of their DNA matches uh, most closely people of modern-day southern Europe, including Spain and Italy. And it's been noted for a long time that they're one of the only African species that were thought of as being a um, separated and untouched type of thing, yet they have mustaches quite frequently and facial hair altogether is really not a, uh, an African or a Negroid thing uh, so much. They get patches around on their face and their jowls, but they, don't, uh, they, they do get mustaches quite frequently like you saw in the picture. Let's look at him real quick. And you can see he's got a good mustache going on and stuff. And a lot of the admix ones in America and admix now today, of course, do get this uh, same type of um, facial hair type thing. But it's not normal. If you look at the non-admix over there, they get very little facial hair at all. Um, in fact, very little body hair at all. Um, because Eurasian people also carry traces of Neanderthal DNA, the finding also shows for the first time that genetic material from our extinct cousins, the Neanderthals, may be widespread in African Negroid populations. The Khoisan tribes of southern Africa are hunter-gatherers and pastoralists who speak unique click languages. They're the ones that have that weird <coughs> popping whenever they talk. If you've ever seen... Uh, so the gods must be angry where the guy throws the coke bottle down and it bounces off the guy's head and he thinks it's some kind of magic thing and they go through the whole movie of it and it's all just a real a parody kind of thing it's actually kind of hilarious i bet though now it's looked at as being politically incorrect and racist even though these people still are there and if a plane flew over they'd feel almost the same way about it um anyhow the Khoisan tribes of southern africa that are hunter gatherers um have this unique click uh, language and uh, an ex extraordinarily diverse gene pool split from everyone else's before the African exodus way back when that they were a separated people like the Nubians are totally separated and really not related to any of the West Africans at all so are these Khoisan. Now these are very special isolated populations carrying what are probably the most ancient lineages in human populations today are the most archaic says david reich of harvard university for a lot of our genetic studies we have treated them as groups that had split from all other present-day humans before they had split from each other but this looks like it goes way back before and the split must have happened 
far, far back, around 1.2 million years ago, and that we have no common ancestors from there, and that's what makes the radical difference between the two of us. Other papers have so shown this. I've had a couple of them recently. The unexpected snippets of DNA most resembled sequences from Southern Europeans, including Sardinians, Italians, and people from the Basque region. See the back to Africa, but from where? Dating methods suggest that they made their way into the Khoisan DNA somehow, sometime between 900 and 1800 years ago, well uh, before a known European contact with Southern Africa. So apparently there was contact running all the way up the Nile and meeting and through these people are coming off the Horn people that met with them somehow a long time ago. It's well known now there were Caucasians in the Horn of Africa and some 40,000 years ago the Hofmeyer site which is down in the area that we're talking about also shows the same type of thing. Hofmeyer is literally right about here and the Blombos Rock Cave is right down here and both of those are showing Caucasian involvement, red ochre and all these type of things and uh, so they show that uh, that probably is the evidence of it uh, although they would have had to come seafaring wise from around like they're kind of showing here in this loop and here's kind of an idea of genetics uh, showing a return to Africa 3,000 years ago long before European colonization now way back when whenever we were talking about the Caucasus mountain ranges and the Black Sea area and these people that were all up in here it wasn't just this blue dot they always try to put on whenever they show you the ancient proto-Indo-Europeans it shows you a blanket that runs out not just these little arrows like boing and uh, so everybody thinks you know oh they all came from this one little mountain place no it's people that were centered around this mountain place way long ago around the time of Neanderthals and then after that they all spread out 40,000 years ago making it all the way across through Europe and 45,000 years ago in reading with Neanderthals at 38,000 years ago we consider them to be modern humans Cro-Magnons are considered modern humans by all uh, lineages of the definition itself that puts it to there at some 60,000 years ago, all across and through India, and then the separations and differentials that go there, and then spread up into what would be Asia. But Caucasians and Asians and Mongolots are extremely closely related. Now, they show you here that maybe this red line comes and jumps across the Red Sea and bypasses Egypt somehow and runs up, or it's more probable possible that they came out of down here or even the Sumerian Strait that runs off Euphrates and came down ran across the horn and all the way around and into there also because through this here there's a giant rift valley here of Lake Tanganyika, Lake Malawi, Victoria and so on else and it's kind of hard to get these two connected it's not as hard as getting across the Sahara up here but it's definitely hard to get those too connected but you can swing through right about in this area it looks like it'd be a fantastic place to come in and just because they're here now doesn't mean that they weren't exactly where my thing is right now and in fact right up oh how about there how about right there how about my little tip pointer is exactly where they're oh right up against the water and these people met right here and then they went south into here I mean there's a lot of evidence that shows you this contact that we're speaking of Anyhow, archaeological and linguistic studies for the region can make sense of the discovery. They suggest that a subset of the Khoisan, known as the Koe Kawadi speakers, arrived in southern Africa from eastern Africa around 2200 years ago. Koe Kawadi speakers were and remain pastoralists who make their living from herding cows and sheep. The suggestion is that they introduced herding to a region that was otherwise dominated by hunter gatherers. So after the fall of Egypt and things, these people went south, probably because the people up north spread out trying to usurp anything they could out of that area, and these people kind of pushed outward way, came south. Now, Reich and his team found that the proportion of Eurasian DNA was highest in Koi Kawadi tribes, who have up to 14% of Western Eurasian ancestry. What is more, they looked at the East African tribes from which the Kohikwadi descended. They found much stronger proportion of Eurasian DNA, up to 50% in some of the populations. 
usually is a blanket they've talked about here recently being around 40 percent finding this new marker bumps it up another 10 or so it seems uh, other ones overlap and uh, what's odd about that is just uh, African Americans here definitely have some uh, Caucasian admix that they were given because of the Jewish slave masters and it all seems to correlate and it all says it's like European Eurasian it's the same people and they say well it can't be them because it's European but indeed this it comes from the Mediterranean the Mediterranean people are now Europeans they'll make a mention of this in here I'm sure probably let's see um, the that result confirms a 2012 result by La, Lucia Pignani Welcome Trust Sanger Institute in Hickston UK which found non-African genes in people living in Ethiopia both of the tw uh, 2012 study and this week's new results show that the Eurasian genes made their way into East African genomes around 3,000 years ago. About a, a millennium later, the ancestors of the Koikawadi headed south, carrying a weaker signal of the Eurasian DNA into Southern Africa. So it wasn't necessarily Caucasians that had done it, but Caucasian hybrids or mulatto-ish people like what the um, Ethiopians are necessarily now and of course now we're finding that that seems to be what was called Ethiopian back in the day or the Kushites were up there were Caucasians that became interbred with black people to a point and then taken over by them a lot more admix came in and then now that hybrid person came down and did this the cultural implications are complex and potentially uncomfortably close to European colonial themes. I actually am not sure that there's any population that doesn't have West Eurasian DNA now, says Reich. These populations were always thought to be pristine hunter-gatherers who had not interacted with anyone for millennia, says Reich's collaborator, linguist Brigitte Packendorf for the University of Lyon in France. Well, no, just like the rest of the world, Africa had population movements too. There was simply no writing, no Romans or Greeks to document it. A twist in the tale. There's one more twist of the tale. In 2010, a research team, including Reich, published the first draft of genome of a Neanderthal. Comparisons with the living humans revealed traces of Neanderthal DNA in all humans, with one notable exception, sub-Saharan peoples like the Yoruba and the Khoisan. Now, that made sense. After early humans migrated out of Africa around 60,000 years ago, they bumped into Neanderthals somewhere in what is now the Middle East. Some got rather cozy with each other, and as their descendants spread across the world to Europe, Asia, and eventually to the Americas, they spread bits of Neanderthal DNA along with their own genes. But because these descendants did not move back into Africa until historical times, most of this continent remained a Neanderthal DNA-free zone, except for North Africa, or right around the entire uh, Mediterranean, always had it, and Egyptians show a higher amount than the common people do, by the way. It's strange, but that's probably because they kept their lineage so strong. Anyhow, or so it seemed at the time, now it appears that the Back to Africa migration 3,000 years ago carried a weak Neanderthal genetic signal deep into the homeland. Indeed, one of Reich's analysis published last month found Neanderthal traces in Yoruba DNA. In other words, not only is Western Eurasian DNA ancestry a global phenomenon, it's also having a bit of Neanderthal living inside of it. Back to Africa, but from where? Well, Reich and his colleagues found that DNA sequences in the Khoisan people most closely resemble some found uh, people who live today in Southern Europe. That, however, does not mean that the migration back to Africa started in Italy or Spain, or that's where it came from. More likely, the migration became or began in what is now the Middle East, from what I said before. Let's see if he clarifies. We know that Southern Europeans can trace their ancestry to the Middle East. However, in the thousands of years since, they and ancestors of the Khoisan left the region. It has experienced several waves of migration. These waves have had a significant effect on the genes of people living in the Middle East today and means Southern Europeans are much closer to the original inhabitants of the Levant than modern-day Middle Easterners. This was your Aryan population that's no longer there. 
This is the thing that's been hidden about the Egyptian DNA. When it came out and it said that they were European type styles, it's because the current population doesn't have blue eyes, blonde and red hair, and they're not really these people. Well, who does it point out that they were the people of? Well, they're kind of like the people way up north and in Europe here. DNA shows you all this stuff. Proto-Indo-Europeans, they call them now instead of Aryans, and everything's just fine. You know, as long as you don't mention that Nazi word, which got ruined somehow from... Oh, let's see, who ruined that? Oh, okay. That might explain some a little more to you. Anyhow, interesting find here. Khoisan, which were thought to have been untouched. These people here, but they, they have a lot yellower skin. They have the... Uh, the melanin change too that's different from the other people here that are just like directly behind them and other negroids and a lot of the west africans of course and so that shows a differential there and they show you how it flip-flops and comes back and in and out of africa now there's been caucasians found all the way through central africa all the way up all north africa was always caucasians and then once the sahara came in it became pretty much a barrier they talk about like, share, and subscribe, guys, and enjoy. Anything else more comes out about this, I will let you know. Peace.